Uh, I've got a lot of notes here, but uh, I uh, want to make just a short talk and let you people ask me some questions. I probably won't have answers to most of them, but uh, yeah, if I know the answer, I'll give it to you. If I don't, I'll tell you that I don't know. But uh, Cage uh, brought up uh, some of my misconduct in the past. Uh, in New York about 50 years ago, I was writing articles for a magazine called The Truth Seeker, and I was lecturing for an organization known as the Ingersoll Forum, named after a great American uh, statesman, Colonel Robert G. G. Ingersoll. And uh, the editor of The Truth Seeker was also a uh, chairman of the Ingersoll Forum, a man named Charles Smith from Arkansas. So Smith says, Jackson, would you like to be a bishop? I says, don't joke. He says, well, there's a new church out, and I think it's out in Denver, Colorado. The Supreme Pontiff of the Liberal Church of America will appoint anybody a bishop that will send him in a donation of a dollar. So I thought the whole thing was a joke. So I handed Charlie Smith a dollar. I says, okay, send in my application. And lo and behold, I got a uh, document stating that I had been appointed a Bishop of the Liberal Church of America and that I could get uh, liquid spirits at half price, <laughs> travel to reduce fares on railroad trains, and perform marriage ceremonies. Well, uh, I considered the whole thing a joke and I said to Charlie Smith, uh, where will I be bishop? He says, well, you live in Harlem, you'll be the bishop of Harlem. So, of course, uh, I treated it as a joke, but I uh, lectured at places like uh, the YMCA and the Unitarian Church, and the joke caught on, and the people were introducing me as Bishop Jackson. Now, um, I, uh, back in 19... 38, I wrote a little pamphlet called Christianity Before Christ. And uh, last year, I had rewritten this stuff and got it into a book, and now it's a book on Christianity Before Christ. The right title for that book should have been The African Origin of Christianity. But uh, I realized that uh, if I gave it that title, uh, you probably, very few people would buy the book. Because I, well, a sad feature about black people today is that most of them are almost totally illiterate. They can't read anything anymore. Uh, television have robbed them of what little uh, literacy they had. So uh, if I just called it Christianity Before Christ in hopes that a few white intellectuals would read it. Would read it. And it worked out all right. Uh, the book came out uh, late in uh, 1985. It's been out just a little over a year now, and uh, I think the publisher has sold over a thousand copies, so that's not bad for a serious book. Uh, uh, when I was teaching at the City University of uh, New York, uh, I was using two of my books as textbooks, uh, Introduction to African Civilizations and Man, God, and Civilization. So one of my students came and said, Professor Jackson, is there any money in writing? I said, why do you ask that question? He said, well, I figured if there was any money in writing, I would become a writer. I said, well, go wait, wait a minute, young man. I said, you, yeah, yeah. you were talking through it. I said, if you had a hat on, I'd say you were talking through it. I said, if you have musical ability, you become a musician. If you have uh, scholarly ability, you become a professor. If you have medical ability, you become a doctor. If you have legal uh, 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 ability, you become a lawyer. I says, now if you can write, you be can become a writer. I says, but, but uh, knowing you only slightly, I have an idea that you couldn't write anything that anybody would want to read. <laughs> so one of the students got up and said, why do you take that attitude? I said, well, I've been teaching at this institution for quite a while now, and I asked all my students to turn in a term paper 
And I says, it's only 10 pages long, and they can't write 10 pages. They go clip pictures out of newspapers and put a picture on every other page. So I get about 